you try and please don't try to write. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, yeah. But the time has come. Yep, to tell we're the here. Story. We're here. We are. And let, let here. me say this before we end it. It was about divine fulfillment all too. I give God yes. the glory. Yes. And the honor in it because I wasn't supposed to live. I lost all all my men. Uh, I was in the machine gun squad and the lieutenants and 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 it was kind of like um, I was a casualty, a double casualty of war and love. I wanted to 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 implement that into the conversation basically because I was fighting two fronts and I lost both. And then the love for you. And then, women. then the love on the end uh, was sort of like redemption. You know, I didn't want to try to get close to anybody again, but it finally worked out. Because it is guns of Ava. Ava was his survival mechanism because he thought she was going to be waiting for him when he came when he came back. But of course, you know. She she got she was very afraid of what she was hearing every day back in the news. Hundreds of soldiers were being killed. And uh, every day, every day, we were uh, losing a lot of lives. And not comparing any war, because every war is bad. Mm -hmm. But in Vietnam, I think we lost in one year what both wars in yeah. 15 have yeah. lost. Yeah. You know, so it was just, just, just a terrible, terrible situation. I wouldn't wish upon anybody. I was totally off, you know. I couldn't hold a job. Uh, I was drinking uh, very hard. Uh, I'd become an alcoholic uh, during that time. And, and people look at you and they think, well, you know, you can get better, but if they've never walked in your shoes, then they have no idea about all the trauma uh, and, and everything that you got to try to overcome getting back because it was at a time where PTSD was not recognized and they were still studying the subject, you know, so we come back on our own trying to cope and trying to learn how to deal with this, trying to figure out uh, what was going on and you had truly changed. So with the families, it was very difficult and I know it was difficult for a lot of American families because when these guys come back oh, yeah. from combat, uh, their wives found out that they were different people all together, you know, and uh, matter of fact, my wife was a little bit afraid of me because of those nightmares at night, uh, uh, the tensions, the shell shocked, you know what I mean? Nerves are just a wreck, just a wreck. And, uh, it, and it's very difficult on a, on a family, very. And he wanted to go back to Vietnam to stay because he could not cope with society here in America. From watching this play, I, I, I would hope that they would gain that there is life after the war, even though the war will always live with you. Uh, but learning how to cope in society was, was, was my biggest obstacle. Uh, trying to, when you find out you're back in the civilian life and you find out that things are different. You went one way and now you're coming back another way. So you've got to sort of uh, take up from where you are and try to make the best of the situation and try to figure out how to get back and you'll never really be the same person you were at that point. So what I hope that veterans will get out of this is that you can learn to cope after war. with casting is that you have so many good people that you got to choose which one would be the make would do the best in demonstrating his life and I'm trying to find the best people to put in the in those roles that would just kind of bring to life what he actually experienced and that comes out in emotions in the in gestures and facial expression and, and just feeling a whole part just 
I guess, of every part that he experiences. And, and the lead character does a pretty good job at that. You know, he brings this man. He really man. does, yeah. He, yeah. he was the guy that I shared some time with in the beginning when, we, when, when Brenda cast him for the role. I had seen him previously uh, through a, a documentary uh, or through a trailer, actually, that, 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 that we'd done. I really liked him because he sat down, he took the time to, to, to talk with me, and I, we shared things and, and stuff like that, and he seemed to just fit right into to what I thought he might portray as a character to, through this. Yeah, this is just not fic this is not fiction. This is a true story. So, therefore, I took my time trying to get the right people in the right places. And that main character, I think, best fits him in that regard. It's strange. You got to know someone because it's a very difficult thing to just start out a conversation. If you've really actually been in combat, it's something you really try to forget. I never did tell the story to anyone at length until I met uh, Professor Wombo. And it came up. We were we were in a restaurant, weren't we? Ta talking, and I don't know. Some, for some reason, I, we were we got on the subject of writing. I think I was writing a, a screenplay at you the were time. At that time. Yeah. And and somehow that the war came up. I, I, oh, I know what it was. He couldn't sleep at night, and he would tell me that he would wake up every night at two o'clock in the morning. Right, every morning. Yeah at the same time. So I asked him, why, why can't you sleep? He said, I've been this way ever since the war. And that's when we started talking. And she asked me why, then uh, it opened up a, a dialogue and we, we began to start talking a little bit about the experience. And I had no idea he had never shared that with anyone, not even his parents. So that was really, uh, it was a privilege to be the person that he would open up that area of his life. It worked out that I'm telling the story and yeah. this lady was blessed uh, to have a, uh, someone, you know, that could tell that story and get it out. And uh, as I say, nobody can do it any better than Professor Womble. <laughs> She's good at what she did. Quiet. Father, we give this entire production to you. I pray, God, that your Holy Spirit would envelop each one, that you move through, in and out, around and above. We bind everything that would come against this play. We put you in charge, Lord. We commit it to you, and we count it done in Jesus' name. All right, now, what I want you to do, we got to project. So stand up. Get in, get in your position. Everybody on stage is ready to hear yet? Okay, if you're not here in one minute, we're going to take a picture.